Hydrogen peroxide is an incredibly useful reagent that has a huge number of applications in both organic and inorganic chemistry. In many parts of the world, the highest concentration that can be bought by amateurs is 12% by weight or less, while a lot of chemistry requires 30% or more, which is not only restricted to companies or universities, but above 35% it's also difficult to transport without paying through the nose for the services of specialist couriers. Fortunately, there are many ways in which it can be concentrated at the point of use, and this video details one of the safer ones. The most typical way of concentrating a dilute solution of a substance in water is to boil off the water by heating it. In this case, that's not a practical option because hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen at high temperatures, and the rate of decomposition increases as it gets hotter. So if you hold the solution at its boiling point for long enough, what you end up with is mostly water. Even worse, the boiling point of hydrogen peroxide is higher than that of water, so as it gets more concentrated, the boiling point increases and the rate of decomposition gets even faster, resulting in a positive feedback loop of water and misery. In this case, what's needed is a way of removing the water while substantially reducing the boiling point of the mixture. There are two ways this can be done, which are vacuum distillation and cold distillation with a substance that forms a low boiling azeotropic mixture with water. In 1931, Hurd and Punterbach considered this problem and came to the conclusion that why not do both? They published a paper detailing their findings and that paper is the basis of the method I'll now demonstrate. A mixture of xylene, which boils at 140 degrees, and water, which boils at 100 degrees, will boil at 92 degrees at atmospheric pressure, and the vapour that results is comprised of 60% of xylene and 40% of water. When the pressure is reduced to one tenth of atmospheric, which is about the best I can do with my vacuum pump, the boiling point of this mixture is reduced to around 20 or 30 degrees, meaning it's possible to concentrate a solution of hydrogen peroxide with nearly no thermal decomposition. Heard and Poutabar's original procedure used cumene, which is isopropyl benzene, instead of xylene, which is dimethyl benzene, but cumene is as rare as hen's teeth to the amateur chemist. Xylene achieves a similar result, and it's readily available in the form of paint stripper. Toluene will work as well, but it's not as efficient. The solvent to water ratio is 80 to 20 rather than 60 to 40. Reagents used were 12% hydrogen peroxide, that's about 100 grams, xylene, that's 150 grams, and C9 to 11 aliphatic alkanes, also known as low odor white spirit, 20 ml of that. As an aside, you can clearly see the hydrogen peroxide bottle leaning to one side. This is because the base is not flat, and that's because the bottle was starting to blow before I even received it, due to the peroxide slowly decomposing into oxygen, showing both that it's an unstabilised grade and that the bottle cap is not vented. I moved it to the fridge as soon as I saw this. Hydrogen peroxide and xylene were weighed into a round bottom flask, and xylene was removed by vacuum distillation with vigorous stirring. As distillation involves boiling two mutually emissible liquids at once, it's slow and difficult. The use of a DMRAP condenser does a lot to increase the throughput. The first time I tried it, I didn't have a heating mantle, I only had a straight walled Liebig condenser. I used a water bath to heat the flask, and it proved to be so slow that I had to break it off and resume it the next day. By contrast, this procedure only took an hour. I lost a bit of the mixture because I made the mistake of slightly overfilling the flask and stirring the mixture too slowly, and some of it overflowed into the condenser when it bumped. The mixture bumps throughout the distillation, being quite violent at the start and calming down towards the end, so the flask should really be no more than half full. The azeotrope boiled off at a reasonably constant 25 degrees at 0.1 bar, with the temperature being monitored by a thermocouple sunk into a well with an airtight joint. The best time to stop distillation is when the mixture is nearly clear and the temperature of the still head suddenly starts rising. That's a sure sign you're boiling off hydrogen peroxide rather than the azeotrope. To remove any remaining xylene, the distillant was washed with 20 ml of low odor white spirit and the two phases were separated using an appropriate funnel. The amount I recovered was 46.3 grams. To work out the concentration of peroxide, I dissolved a sample in 7.5% sulfuric acid and titrated it with potassium permanganate solution. The peroxide content was 24% by weight, which is about what you'd expect when a little over half the water is removed from a 12% solution. If you're planning to store your newly concentrated peroxide for long periods, it's best to acidify it to pH 4 or less using atidronic or phosphoric acid, then stabilising it with 0.1% sodium stannate. Since I'd be using this stuff straight away, I didn't bother with any of that, and I just put it in the fridge. Also, I didn't have any sodium stannate or etidronic acid to hand. I actually learned this lesson in a professional setting. I used to work in the R&D department of a manufacturing firm that produced peroxide creams for hair dyeing, among other things, and that job was a whole education in itself. 
One odd thing I noticed is that the actual azeotropic ratio of xylene to water was closer to 3 to 1 than the 3 to 2 claimed in literature. I don't know whether this is due to the ratio varying with atmospheric pressure or due to my xylene being mislabeled. It claims to be both xylene and ethyl benzene, which are not the same thing. Xylene is 1, 2, 1, 3, or 1, and 4 down ethyl benzene, usually a mixture. But in any case, I got the desired result, so it didn't really matter. So, in conclusion, this is a quick and easy way to concentrate hydrogen peroxide, provided you have the right equipment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.